listening or ignoring, I don't care. I have to stop her. Inside Robin was a white hot rage. Robin didn't quite know what she'd encountered. Sheesh! She's so angry. The thought stuck with Robin. What's wrong with her, I wonder? Whew. I think I need a breather. A place to rest. Robin was beginning to feel the burn of loneliness. Robin's thoughts drifted back to the burning giantess. Why would she be so full of rage? She must have felt... Unappreciated. Nobody values her. That's it. That would drive me underground too. Robin vowed to be more understanding. If they met again. As the light pushed back the darkness, a heaviness lifted from her heart. That was strangely satisfying. was adrift on the current. Without control. Lost on the flow of lava.
it would take her where it wished. It's speeding up. That can't be good. The burning river went faster. And faster. left, it brought a change. You did it again! Lump's anger gone. Lump? Nice to meet you. I'm Robin. Sorry I was so angry. Lump sorry too. Lump scares Lump when Lump's so big. I'm looking for a dragon. Have you seen it? What? Dragon? I'll show you. But first, we need to get out of here. Hmm. hmm. Just then, Robin noticed a boom shroom she hadn't seen before. Lump! 
You coming? Lump likes Robin. Hello, journal. Today, Sarah at school told me her granddad had a stroke too. His mouth went lopsided and he spoke a little funny. Now he mostly sits around watching the telly. I don't think Gran would enjoy that. She'd feel like she was giving up. She'd want to keep moving. Keep doing things. Gran always says. your kindness and it will return it threefold the more positive energy and kindness you give the world the more you get back when mr. Parry's lawn got too high gran cut it for him for the community center meals she baked cakes! She even does the unthinkable. She changed Ben's smelly nappies. What could do with kindness right now? Someone better step up. Me! Starting with... Bringing world peace? Cooking for the elderly? Cutting Mr. Parry's lawn? Tidying my room? Bringing order to chaos. A mighty struggle needs a suitable tagline. It's tidying time. And then I did the washing up from breakfast. Dad said... It's a miracle. Then he bowed at my feet. He's such a complete numpty head. But it made Mum laugh. And when we got to the hospital later, Gran was sitting in a chair and looking out the window. She was smiling. So all the things I've been doing have been working. I just have to do more. There was kale for tea, which is a kind of vegetable torture. 
But I told myself... ...that if I could eat all of it, then Gran would be even better tomorrow. on fire today I ran up the stairs two at a time just to top things up Pinky was very impressed and slept on my feet all night hello again journal I couldn't sleep I guess I felt a bit silly. I mean, who cares if I eat my kale? Well, Dad, maybe? But does any of this really make a difference? It's just, if there's a sliver of a chance, it actually does. I want to believe in it. told me that when her granddad was sick she used to pray I don't exactly know how that works but best to hedge my bets religious not like mum and dad I don't know that much about religion actually I like the stories especially the one about the ark and rescuing all the animals Gran was raised Catholic, but I never really heard her talk about God, apart from that time she dropped the yogurts in Tesco's. We took care of the mess before the staff noticed. offered to pay for them. I asked her once. She said, if there is a god, they're in our actions. How we help and love one another. Seems right to me. So what should I do? I'm going to bring in my story next time we go to the hospital. I can read it to her. I think she'd like that. Maybe if I do a really good job, she can come home in time for Ben's birthday. But first, I need to get on with the story. Having escaped the flaming caves, Lump and Robin ventured into a tenebrous forest. Writing Lump is going to be fun. But if she's not so angry anymore, she might need another character flaw. Maybe... 
uncontrollable cravings for... Stink fruit. Gentle sunlight streamed across their faces. Sun! I'm Misty. Oh, sky fire is warm. Like love! That's the dragon! We've got to follow it! Follow it. Let's go, Lump. Lump, no light follow anything that goes. Are you coming? Grey forest, dark, foreboding. Robin didn't care. Oh, you miss it? Yes, that's why I'm doing this. Stole our fireflies. I promised I'd get them back. Robin couldn't help but smile at Lump's silliness. Her fiery friend was finding a place near and dear to her heart. Suddenly, a pungent stench filled the air. Lump noses that smell. What is it, Lump? Looks like some kind of fruit. A fruit? Yum yum. 
Lump, love, fruit. Oh, that smells worse than Elder Ava's pickled tree slugs. Please, Lump, leave it alone. Shadows deepened in the ravaged forest. We're getting closer. Do we want to be closer? Look, Lump! Dragonfire! It's here. Yes, yes, dragon. It's okay. Now it's okay. Robin felt her resolve melt. I need to find the dragon. I promised Elder Ava. Just what am I doing out here? All by myself? Silly human. Lump not left is in fruit. Thanks, Lump. Robin knew she wouldn't swap little ball of fire for anything. Wow! <laughs> You're okay, Lump? Little dizzy, but good! There was no doubt. Something strong and very, very large had been here recently. There it is! 
Robin pursued the beast with little thought for her own safety. You won't get away from me again. I won't let you. Ah, no. Come back. Come back here. Dragon had gone far, far below. No. I. I. Her hope was shattered. I can't. It's okay, human. We find Dragon again. Have another go, right? It's okay. Lump help. Doing? I'm such an idiot. What did I think I was going to do if I caught it? You tried, though, woman. That's important. Look! One of them's little glowy things you like. Good as fruits, is it? Woman, is it? Where do you come from, Mum? Don't remember. Don't remember anything? No, just remember. 
Energy stirred, reaching into the place beyond. Ah, oh, it feels good to be back. Already, it's only been a few millennia. Is it not wonderful to see light again, to feel sun? <laughs> I was just getting comfortable in the howling void. Who are you two? Ooh, ancient ones. Thought you was a myth. No, no, my little friend. We are very real. No, we're not. You're imagining us. Go away now. Now we're here. What can we do to help you? Mum, they could help us get to the dragon. But nothing is free in this market, or in life. You must provide three offerings to the flame. Should we...? If help human, if it make human happy, Lump say do it! Lovely to see you both. So, what is this place? The market of the lost and the forgotten. Things end up here that have been cast aside or are no longer useful. After a time, so were we. No one came here. No one sought us. I thought we would forget ourselves, but you brought us back. Also receive. I don't have money. Then give a kindness.
Well, don't come complaining to me when there's a big dark hole in your head. What memory are you prepared to consign to the flames? Last offering must keep our fire burning. A gesture of hope, of friendship. But it cannot be given by you. And we've already given you something, so we're out. <laughs> what about love? You have something to give? Sure, I got love. You would give yourself to help your friend? You don't have to do this. There must be another way. This is important to human. You freed Lump. You gave Lump memories. Lump want to give you something too. this. It is important. You made promise to find Dragon. Lump helps. I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye for us. Hello for you and Dragon. As little Lump jumped into the fire, the flames began to burn, larger and brighter. Robin felt a change come over her. Slits opened in her neck. Gills! She could now breathe underwater. The wish has been granted. Time for us to go. Hope you like your gift. <laughs> The loss of Lump weighed heavily upon her. Where once there was light, was now darkness. Where there was noise, only cold silence remained. But she could not let Lump's sacrifice be in vain. She needed to get to the lake and use her newfound powers to pursue the dragon. The lake looked murky, but she had to brave its depths.
it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Grand died in the night. Mum got the call a few hours ago. She's still crying. I just feel... to go back to sleep. But as soon as I close my eyes, the thoughts keep circling back. Just grand. Right? Maybe I should have stayed at home. When we finally arrived, I wasn't so sure about being there at all. We went up the stairs to room 305. Grand's room. Mum gently put her hand on my back. and asked me if I wanted to wait outside. I said, yes. Hello again, journal. I'm sitting in the waiting room. Just rows of plastic benches in a sea of blue linoleum. And it smells like Ben's bottom cream. A little doodling should distract me from this dreary place. Dad had his arm round Mum 
as they came out of Gran's room. I've never seen her like this. Mums aren't supposed to cry. They're strong. They're meant to know what to do. Always. I guess losing your own mum makes you feel like a kid again. The drive home was a quiet one again. It's silly, but I keep thinking back to Gran's favourite vase, the one Grandad gave her. I was running in the house, even though Gran had told me not to. I still remember the noise of the vase smashing into little pieces. Gran was there in an instant, I waited for her to shout. She didn't. She just looked sad. And somehow? That was worse. Gran wouldn't let me... pick up the pieces. She found every single one and carried them into the kitchen. Later I sneaked in with a tube of glue in hand. she saw the vase. She put it in the cupboard. Later I found it again, 